-hmm. However, thousands and thousands of Chinese people saw through this, and thousands and thousands of Chinese people who hated the Japanese invaders were one to co the Communist Party because they were the ones who actually were serious about fighting the fascists. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you know, the, the the People's Liberation Army was growing, growing in mass numbers. Mao Zedong was a cult figure, um, and also you'll notice that in a lot of Mao's writings, um, they they have lists like the four this is and the five that's, you know, the four great relationships that you know, or that's the ten great relationships, you know, you know, the 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 four alls, the uh, you know, the the four news, the four olds, the, you know, that's one thing in in Mao is that because China was an illiterate, China was a largely illiterate country, and the idea was if you were illiterate, you, those were easy to memorize. Uh -huh. Right. So, um, you know, the idea was that, um, you know, when in, in, in China, you, you know, if you can't read, right, you can remember that in Mao, Mao Zedong is fighting to rid China of old customs, old habits, old beliefs, and uh, old cultures, right? And you can remember that and memorize it very easily. And it was, and that's, that's why he did that. Also, um, Mao made a big point that the People's Liberation Army was to be a political army, um, you know, down to the lowest rank. Not only did you, you know, when you got trained to be a People's Liberation Army soldier, not only did you get trained in, you know, how to use a gun, you also got trained in how to, um, in, in Marxist theory. And even down to the lowest ranks, they were discussing, you know, what is Marxism, they, you know, and the, the newest recruited peasant. Uh, Mao also made a point of having women. There were women, entire sections, women's militias. So, uh, which that was kind of unheard of at the time. Uh, there was an advisor sent to China by the Soviet Union who advised Mao Zedong. His name was Borodin, Michael Borodin, I believe. Or Borodin. Maybe I, Borodin. Yeah, and he was the the, the uh, he was of Russian heritage, and he was sent by the Communist International to kind of overlook it. And um, Mao also he knew how to, like I said, he was a skilled propagandist. So he brought in foreign journalists, and he knew how to charm them and impress them, so that they would go back. And, and report positively about it. Edgar Snow, uh, who was a, a, a pretty well-known writer at the time, he wrote for magazines like The New Yorker and all that. You know, he had the idea to go and you know report on what was happening in China as they were fighting the Japanese. And he went. And he was so thoroughly impressed with Mao Zedong. He wrote this book, Red Star Over China, mm -hmm. which I mean goes into detail and has Mao's life story. And you know, and, and and Mao was very good at at creating an image of the revolution and of Marxism. You know that would make it seem romantic and idealistic, and pull more people into his ranks. And he, w he was very effective at doing that. And many peasants were won over to, to Mao because he was the one who was fighting the Japanese. Mm -hmm. He was the one who gave them the chance to redistribute land. They could get some revenge on that landlord who's been starving them for for years. Women, you know, for the first time had the right to own property, so that meant they could get divorced. The husbands, if they wanted to kill their wives. They would they would divorce her. They had the ability to divorce her, and then she would starve because she wouldn't get any of any any of the crops on the land. They did, they carried out land redistribution, gave peasants their own land. They they gave women independence. They set up women's committees, peasant associations in each of the villages, and and all of this happened at the same time they were fighting the Japanese and building up this fighting force against Japan. And so finally. Uh, finally, when World War II ended, China, uh, the, the communists had a control of a whole big section of the country, was under the control of, of the Chinese uh, Communist Party. So as the war ended, the idea, that the treaty that they had signed was that after, the, after Japan had been defeated, that the, the nationalists and the, com and the communists would have a coalition government, and they would both have seats. However, as the war ended, it didn't happen that way. Chiang Kai-shek flat out refused to give the communists the right to run for office or have seats in the government. And it wasn't just because Chiang Kai-shek was an evil guy, it was because the U.S., which had the Marshall Plan, had one of the, if you were to get aid from the Marshall Plan, you could not have communists in your government. Even if it was just one person, you could not have it in the government and get aid from the Marshall Plan. So Chiang Kai-shek, on that basis, barred communists from being part of the government. The Communist Party, it was interesting, they, they, they uh, and they, the Chinese even now make a point of this. I know on the anniversary of the Chinese Revolution, the current government of China made a, made a, a film that really reminded me of Pearl Harbor. Have you seen the movie Pearl Harbor with Ben Affleck and a whole lot of action about World War II? They made a movie, The Founding of the Republic, and it's an action film all about it. And that was a point they hammered out for the first half hour of the film. They make the point about 600 times that they didn't, that, that, that the reason they had to take power was because they were barred from democratically taking power. They would have won any election that happened after the war, and so no election was had. You know, if voting could change anything, it would be illegal, so they made voting illegal.
voting for the communists at least. So at that point, the communists engaged and they launched war against Chiang Kai-shek mm -hmm. and against the nationalists. And they won. And uh, they, they launched it after the war, after they tried desperately to be in, in part in, in charge of the country. And they finally, they did win. 1949, Mao Zedong uh, and Lin Biao and, and the revolutionary forces marched into Tiananmen Square and proclaimed the Chinese people, one quarter of humanity, have stood up. Um, and and it, was, it was a great victory. But one problem that would manifest itself, and still does manifest itself now in China, was the fact that a number of people who had joined the Communist Party in China had not joined on the basis of, of belief in Marxism or belief in socialism, but had joined on the basis of these were the people who actually wanted to free us from imperialism. A number of people joined simply because they were Chinese nationalists. And that was the first to point it out. There was an entire right-wing section of the party that Mao called the capitalist Broders, who they were for the communists because the nationalists were tools of the U.S. and they wanted independence. But that was it. Okay. I mean, they, they, they really had very little unity with, um, you know, with, with Marxism, Marxism-Leninism. Um, however, uh, and, and also when the Chinese, when they, when, and when they had their revolution, they made a point that the Communist Party was not the only party. But it was kind of silly because there were four other parties that each had like one person in a parliament that had like 90 other people in it. And the other parties were all supposed to represent another class. That was kind of the, because it was the block of four classes. So the Communist Party was supposed to represent the proletariat. And then you had like the Peasants Party that just had one guy and he was supposed to represent the peasants. There was another guy who was supposed to represent the small business owners, and I mean, and still today now in China they, they have that, right? If you get on, you know, if you get on the Chinese communi government's website, not the Chinese Communist Party, they'll say we're a multi-party government. We have the Communist Party and these four other guys, you know, <laughs> in, in the entire Chinese Parliament. But it was to make the point that that, that it was a coalition government. Um, so what's China today? But uh, <laughs> and so at the time China was set up. Uh, uh, Mao called the government a united front under the leadership of the proletariat. And one thing I will say for Workers' World Party is we were one of the only countries that recognized that China had had a socialist revolution. Mm -hmm. That, you know, at the time that, 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 that 1949, when Mao declared one quarter of humanity has stood up, that at that time the power was in the hands of a communist party, you know, of workers and peasants who were trying to construct socialism. Whereas the Socialist Workers' Party said it was merely a nationalist revolt, and the, uh, and the Communist Party USA said it was a people's democracy. They refused to acknowledge until much later that it was a revolution. Workers World Party as a faction within the Socialist Workers Party had the dissident position that, the chi that China has had a socialist revolution. And the, the words that Sam Marcy used was it was not chemically pure, um, but overwhelmingly it was a socialist revolution. That the class relations had changed and, and, the wor and a, a, a party of workers was in power in China and that China was looking to construct a socialist society. Um, and, and China was allied with the Soviet Union, and McCarthyism in the U.S. Uh, was on the rise uh, at the time. And one of the big talking points they had to, that the Republicans used was to attack the Democratic Party for supposedly losing China. They said that, uh, you know, the Democrats lost China. You know, they handed China over to the communists. You know, if we'd have been in office, why, we'd have sent troops there, and there'd have been, well, we never would have let the communists take China. And also, you'll notice today there are two countries called China, right? There's yeah. the People's Republic of China, and then there is Taiwan, Taiwan, the island of Taiwan, which is officially called the Republic of China. And that's where Chiang Kai-shek and his party went. And they still rule Taiwan, um, and they are the Republic of China. And for a long time, they even have, and even now, they have representatives of all the districts in China in the island of Taiwan. People who've never been to all the districts in China, representing those the government of Taiwan, also has brutally repressed the, 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 the native people of Taiwan because the way it works is because Taiwan is the, the, the Republic of China, all these representatives of mainland China who aren't actually from there vote out any representative of Taiwan. So the native people of Taiwan are brutally repressed by the Chinese nationalists uh, and the, the right-wing Chinese nationalists who left and came. Um, <coughs> no, are you talking about the indigenous people? Of uh, Taiwan, yes. They, they, have, they have one vote in a parliament that's supposed to represent all of China, except it only represents Taiwan. Now, um, and for a long time, um, uh, for a long time, China, w uh, China, the People's Republic, was not even admitted to the United Nations. Uh, mm -hmm. It wasn't until Richard Nixon and the U.S. even recognized that the government in China was actually a legitimate government. Mm -hmm. So, 
So next week we're going to talk about the construction of socialism in China and the many uh, turmoils and, and arguments and fights that have been involved in that. But that's how we're, I'm going to cut it off for this week. So uh, we're going to cut it off here, um, and um, we're all going to be able to stretch our legs and uh, and stuff. And I've got books and all that. And then we'll sit down and we'll have some discussion, Q and A, conversation. All right. So we're going to cut it off here for now. And all right. All right. So feel free to stretch your legs. Go smoke a cigarette.